Hi everyone, in today's lecture, we're gonna go over dot product. So dot product is basically a scalar product. And the dot products of two vectors is denoted by a dot b. So the formula to, uh, to find the dot product is norm of a, norm of b, and cosine of the angle between their tails. So we use this formula to calculate the dot product between two vectors when we are given the angle between their tails. But when we are not given the angle, so this is how we calculate the dot product. So for examples, um, vectors, if we are given vectors in two space, so for example, we have a vector x1, y1, and another vector x2, y2. So how do we commute the dot product? We're just going to do x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2. And this is my dot product, a dot b. If this is my vector a and this is my vector b. Now, if you want to calculate the, if we're given the vectors, vectors in three space, so if we're given x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2, now to commute the dot product between them, e dot b, it's going to be x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2 plus z1 times z2. So now, now let's do a numerical problem. We're given uh, a vector a and a vector b so there has to be an arrow above them because these are vectors so we're given vector a which is 10 2 negative 6 and vector b negative a half 4 and negative 2 now we have to commute the dot product so it should be 10 times negative a half plus 2 times 4 and then plus negative 6 times negative 3, which is negative 5, plus 8, negative negative makes it positive, 6 times 3 is 18, so plus a positive 18, which gives us 21. And this is my vector, a dot b. Also, you guys need to know an important property of the dot product. which is uh, if you dot product a vector with itself, it is the magnitude of the vector to the square of it. This is a very important property and you guys need to know it. It's like a formula. So if you guys wanna know how do we derive that? So um, earlier I gave you how to find the dot product, right? So a dot b is magnitude of a, magnitude of b, and cosine of the angle between their tails. So, if we're given a vector u, and if we place another vector on top of it of the same length and same magnitude, like another vector on top of it, and what's the angle between their tails? It's zero, right? So, zero degrees the angle. So, cosine of zero, what's cosine of zero? So, cosine of zero is one. So, if it's one, so u dot u would be magnitude of u and magnitude of u and cosine of zero which is one so it's uh, simply magnitude of u square now let's move on to orthogonal vectors So orthogonal means perpendicular vectors. So two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular when they're when the angle between their tails is 90 degrees. So like this is 90. And if you commute the dot products of orthogonal vectors, what does it give us? So magnitude of a, magnitude of b, cosine of the angle between their tails. So 
angle between their tails is 90 degrees. So cosine of 90. And what's cosine of 90? It's 0. So this thing becomes 0 and the whole a dot b is 0. So simply a dot b is equal to 0. So whenever we have a the dot product equals to 0, that means the two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular. Also, you guys need to know that uh, if you commit the dot product of two vectors and if their angle between their tails is greater than 90 degrees. So for example, you're given two vectors like a and b and their angle between their tails is greater than 90 degrees. It's greater than 90 degrees, so that means the dot products will be negative. And if, if the angle between their tails is less than 90, so here is vector A, vector B, and um, the angle between their tails is less than 90 degrees, so and the dot product would be positive. And there's another case when um, there is when we're given two vectors like A and B and when they're pointing in the opposite direction. So in this case, the angle between their tails is 180 degrees. So here cosine of 180 is going to be negative 1. So the dot product in this case would be negative as well. Now let's do an example. Find the angle between two vectors A, A which is 2, 4, 0, and vector B, negative 1, negative 1, and 4. Now there has to be an arrow above them because these are vectors. Okay, so now we have to find the angle between them. So to calculate that, we know that it's magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cosine of the angle between the tails. So if you want to find the angle, so we're looking for this, the angle, theta. So we're going to move this, a dot b. We, the, here, it's magnitude of a is multiplying cosine theta. So if we move it to the other side, it's going to divide. So magnitude of a. And similarly, for, for magnitude of b, it's multiplying. So for the other side, it's going to divide. So we're left with cosine theta. And this is the angle. This is, I'm sorry, this is the formula to find the angle between their tails. Okay, now let's do this. So first of all, we're going to find magnitude of A, which is square root of 2 plus square root of 4. And um, square root square, square, square to 2 square plus 4 square and square root it and then which gives us square root of 20 and then square root of ma magnitude of b which is negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 4 squared and which gives us square root of 18 Okay, so we have magnitude of A, which is plus the square root of 20, magnitude of B, which is square root of 18. Now we have to find A dot B, which is 2 times negative 1 plus 4 times negative 1 plus 0 times 4. This gives us 0, and 2 times negative 1 makes negative 2, negative 4 plus 0, which gives negative 6. And now the formula to find the angle between their tails, cosine theta, b dot b, magnitude of a, magnitude of b. So a dot b, we got negative 6. Magnitude of a, we got square root of 20. Magnitude of b, we got 18. So we have negative 6 over 360. So we have cosine theta equals to negative 6 over 360. So we're going to do cos inverse both sides. So theta equals to cos inverse of negative 6 over 360. 
Now you're just going to use your calculator to calculate that and it gives 108.43 degrees. And yeah, make sure that your calculator is in degrees. Okay, now let's do another example where we're given uh, a vector A, a vector B, and a vector C. And we have to find to the dot product of C and B, C dot B, and we have to multiply it with the vector A. Now, um, do you guys know if this is going to give us a vector or a scalar? Okay, so... This is going to give us a vector because if you guys remember at the beginning of the video, I told you that the dot products gives a scalar. So C dot B will give us a scalar. And if B times a scalar by a vector A, so a scalar times a vector gives us a vector. So the answer has to be a vector, not a scalar. So now let's calculate it. Now first do C, C dot B, C dot B, which is the vector C dot product with the vector B. Now, 3 times negative 1 plus 6 times 2 plus negative 1 times 5. Now this gives us negative 3 plus 12, negative 5, which gives us 4. Now this is the answer to C dot B. Now we have to do, we have to multiply it by, uh, by the vector A. So then 4 times the vector A. Which gives us 8 negative 12 16 so this is the answer to the question to find c dot c dot b dot times a and this is of course a vector thanks for watching